So I was sitting here randomly just perusing on social media, doing my thing as I usually do, wasting time, you know, letting the flipping minutes and hours kind of pass me by while I'm not doing the things that I probably should be doing to advance my life and my career. And I happened to stumble upon this picture that was shared on social media of the one and only Kanye West. And it says as following. Kanye in Beverly Hills last night and you could see him wearing an entire Adidas and Balenciaga um, you know garb sipping some sort of champagne or a wine whatever it may be outside of some restaurants I looked at it I was thinking that's an interesting picture based on the brands alone that this man is wearing and the reason why it made me think it's interesting because you all know what's been happening with Ye right you know it's been happening with Kanye you know what the deal is with all this Jewish comments he's been making and people labeling him an anti-semite which he might be who knows but he's been in a bit of you know a bit of trouble over the last few months it feels like he just keeps ratcheting it up all the time never apologizing doubling down tripling down quadrupling down to the point where he lost a lot of money because Adidas ditched him Balenciaga ditched him he couldn't do concerts in places and I'm pretty much sure and I'm pretty sure if Kyrie Irving had to make that hostage type video to have the ability to go back and play basketball again, I'm pretty sure Kanye is probably still feeling the after effects of all the comments that he's made. So life probably isn't the smoothest it's been for him when it comes to moving around and doing the things that he wants to do in terms of business because everybody's been scared off of him because of those comments. But for me, the thing that was really interesting about seeing this picture are the brands because you feel like Kanye, like much like myself, is somebody that is quite materialistic. It is somebody that puts a lot of value in brands. It is somebody that pro probably attached a lot of their own personal value on the brands themselves. And for him to be such an ardent Demna fan like myself, for him to be such a big fanatic of Balenciaga like myself and Vetema to a certain extent like myself, to then publicly get essentially dismissed or for have to have Ben Shaka publicly dis, um, distance himself from him to the point where they removed all his selects from their website, added us to basically cancel his contract and not pay him any royalties. I, I'm assuming it's probably going to go to court and essentially say, hey, we're going to still release your shoes under our own banner, but you're not going to get anything from this. And for him to step out in that same garb says a lot about the guy. Either he's trolling or he generally doesn't care. Like the product always comes first and he's able to separate the person who makes it or the business around it and the relationships around it and just wear it for what it is. And I wish, talking about myself, I wish I could be that person. I wish I could separate the person who makes a particular item and the item that they actually make because essentially a product is an inanimate object i shouldn't really associate any or link any kind of personality any wrongdoing um any altercation should not be linked to a flipping t-shirt or a hoodie or a down jacket or a polo or a hat it makes no sense but unfortunately i am one of those redax i am one of those redax that associates those kind of things with us with, with that and i can't let it go and the reason why i brought this up is this is concerning palace right the very famous and popular skateboarding brand here in the uk that's also gone global i had one bad interaction i wouldn't really call it bad it was probably an interaction that i wanted a different result out of and it obviously didn't happen and if anything that interaction probably served me well because in the few well you know for years years after i made it my mission never to go out of my way to say hi to anybody that i kind of looked up to or admired or liked on the internet i kind of just kept my love on the internet i'll double tap i'll leave a comment and that'll be it i wouldn't try and kind of communicate with that person in real life because usually it doesn't go the way you want it to go to and you know a recent example i already mentioned on the pod which i kind of broke my oath to do so in real life was when i happened to bump into juliana huxtable at flipping panorama bar in Berghain. Um, you know, I enjoyed the set. I thought it was decent. I saw her there standing there with some friends. I went up to say hi and, you know, I enjoyed your set and the reaction wasn't the greatest, let's say. And again, not, not the person's fault, but you just imagine it from, you know, their point of view, just some strange guy coming up to you in the middle of a dance floor, probably covered in sweat for, you know, the reasons that you'll probably guess saying that you did a good set and putting his hand out to touch you and stuff is like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Go away from me, you absolute ogre so i completely get it so those interactions never work out so it's probably my fault the whole palace thing but i wish i could be that way because the palace story is really interesting for me in that 
it's still something that I kind of hold on to now, even though it doesn't actually matter in the grand scheme of things. So I think this was a while back. This must have been when they probably first started. This might have been around 2015 or something like that, or maybe later. It was very, it was a long time ago. It wasn't 2015. It must have been more long ago than that. And I, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the first people that bought some T-shirts from them when they put them out on sale because I think the whole law around them was that it was something that they kind of only did for their crew. They had that whole PWBC thing going on and then it kind of was a bit of a cult thing on the underground and it kind of popped and then they started selling some. But it took a while for them to sell to like regular folk who weren't part of their little clique, right? And I was the first person to buy some stuff from them. And if I'm not mistaken, I bought one of my first T-shirts from them, maybe from Slam City Skates. Like I legitimately went to the store in Slam City Skates. I think it might have been in New Street and picked up a T-shirt there. It was the the one with the logo in it, that triangle logo. Um, and, it, and I think on that T-shirt, they printed it on T-shirts that were flipped inside out so you had the seams on the outside which was pretty cool um i bought that in black and white i had like a chanel t-shirt that classic one they did i bought one of the first ones of those so i was really early on like palace like oh this is the one right this is how this is basically the uk version of supreme which it obviously turned out to be and they're super successful and doing great things so congrats to them but then i was working in some nike store and we had some event i don't know what the event was don't ask me but one of the founders was there and some other people and i guess at the time, they weren't really making many things. They were just maybe making t-shirts and hoodies or something. And then I think at the time, I was like, oh my God, if they had a hat, because that's when I was obsessed with snapback hats, right? With the ones with the with the strap at the back or the fight, you call them fire panels now, but I was obsessed with those. I used to wear loads of trucker hats as well. And I was like, oh man, if they make one of those, that'd be sick. And then I think I saw somebody with an early sample or something. And then I guess I saw one of the founders wearing, I was like, oh cool. Uh, let me ask and find out if these are coming out. And I was asking if they were coming out and then I tried to initiate a conversation to ask about the hat and also kind of prove that I was legit and I liked the brand and it just didn't click or come across well. And then I remember thinking like, why am I trying to suck up to or praise these people that are making this brand when, you know, visually and who they are as people that I would never be their friends anyway, right? Because they're like these guys that I would maybe associate with people who maybe cosplay or LARP like you know that like they're working class like you know who do you think of i think of that blondie mccoy kid being as like a good example a lot of their friends were like that they had that kind of look of people who kind of want to look like they're from their ends but they're not really from their ends they wear like loafers with tracksuit bottoms and reeboks and you know white socks and stuff and sovereign rings and stuff just really corny lamey stuff so I remember instantly having an interaction and instantly going into defense mode. Like, they're not cool anyway. Fuck them. It's like when you see a girl that you like and she rejects you. You're like, oh, yeah, she's not hot anyway, man. Fuck her in there. Who cares? Who cares? So I went into that mode straight away. And it was funny because from that moment, and again, this was must, I'm going to say this was 2007. I don't know what year this was. Whatever year I was working at 1948 at the Nike store, it was a very, very long time ago. Many things have happened. Time has passed. People don't remember crap. Who knows who owns it still? I don't know if it's the same people. I don't know. I haven't checked but it was so long ago but from that moment that I had that odd interaction I've never worn Palace ever again and this is even and this is kind of despite them making you know objectively good things like fair enough the recent stuff with Gucci was terrible and that will probably end up at the bottom of an ocean somewhere choking on a baby turtle right absolutely horrendous too much product uh, unnecessary that's probably the opposite of fucking sustainability and it's god awful in my opinion it looks very gaudy uh, i don't know who is trying to service luxury consumers do they care about palace do palace customers care about gucci probably not they're probably just trying to merge you know customer bases and see if it works maybe they can you know sow a seed into some 12 year old from milton Keynes, and maybe when he turns 21 his first pair of loafers will be gucci's i don't really know but regardless it probably isn't the greatest thing they've done but apart from that their collections are objectively great the most recent one i remember stumbling across on hypebeast i think featured this parker that i would legitimately wear it doesn't have many logos it has i think one logo on the left hand sleeve it's like a fur parker and it's got like fur around the hood and stuff and it's massive really thick down parker that comes probably above your knees and it comes like an olive or something and i think it may be a black as well like it looks great i'd legitimately wear it and they have this other one that they did that comes up like a 
like a snood type of thing. They got great outwear. Don't get me wrong with it. The the Umbro and Palace stuff I saw, the t-shirts like count me out of that. That's the sort of stuff you see people wearing at art galleries and stuff. I mean, rolling up their cigarettes outside with skateboard underneath their feet. You know, it's just like always, you know, come on, relaxing and just sometimes get a bus or get a train. You're not skating all the way here from Crystal Palace. Like no one believes you. But all that stuff, like, I wouldn't really be on that kind of vibe. But it's kind of like, um, I'm kind of punishing myself, you know what I mean? Because no one remembers any of think what I'm talking about. It's just like in my own interaction. So when I see Kanye here sipping on his champagne, proudly and happily wearing his Demna design Balenciaga Adidas collaboration and knowing how Adidas essentially threw him under the bus or ended their relationship with him and essentially took away everything that he holds dear in terms of his billionaire status and the clout that that thing gave him and the money and all that and the prestige and bloody blah, blah, blah. blah and he's still happily wearing those brands despite everything that happened, it kind of puts my little interaction in, it kind of makes it seem really minuscule and it kind of makes me look like an absolute idiot because essentially these are just clothes, who cares? But now time has gone by, so I'm not really at the age now where I'd want to be walking around with a flipping palace triangle on my back, do you know what I mean? that's just not the vibe because I'd imagine much like that joke, what's that joke? I think it's, it's a Crystal Lear joke, isn't it? I think it's a Christian Lear joke. Like if you've got someone else's name on your back, you're like they basically get to, you know, um, have their way with you. So I'd imagine if you're, if I'm my age now and I've got a palace triangle on my back, that basically means I'm giving the permission of that team to do what they want to me when they see me. Do you know what I mean? They can bend me over some rail somewhere and legitimately rail me, which I obviously wouldn't like. So I'll just leave that to the kids. But I saw that Kanye picture and I just couldn't help but, you know, remember my little silly dilly answer to those people and how it affected my buying decisions in the end. And it's interesting because I think, People like, it happens to a lot of people because I think that's why in general, I think to myself like, it must be difficult to be a celeb, innit? Or to be somebody of notoriety who's making something worthwhile that people want to, you know, say thanks or talk to you, whatever it may be. Because for you, it's just any other interaction. Because I guess at the time that I had interaction with those guys that own Palace, that was very early on. They weren't as well known as they are now. That was maybe the first two or three years that they first started a company. So maybe it was legitimately and genuinely weird to have stranger come up to you and say, I like your t-shirt because you're thinking, how does he even know it's me? I don't even have that many pictures of me on the internet. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that can start coming into your head or just a black guy coming and talking to you in the first place because you don't have many black friends, whatever, who knows? But nowadays i'm assuming if someone was to come up to him and say something it'd be a lot easier because you've probably given a conference somewhere you've done interviews you've done photo shoots it's a bit easier but the thing i'm thinking about why it might must be hard if you're a celeb or somebody of notoriety is that for you it's just any other interaction you have a you have many of them every day even if it's not even if it's non-verbal someone just nodding or you know waving their hand or whatever you have them every single day so for you, it's nothing. But for the person that's waving or nodding, that's everything because they don't get to see you all the time because, you know, they just, why would they get to see you? You're the person that's making something. You're over there living your cool life, doing cool things. But then if you do make the tiniest bit of effort to acknowledge them and just be cool, that actually solidifies that relationship forever. Like I mentioned it many times on this pod, the times that I bumped into um, Dion Dublin and I forgot the other guy he was with. He was another, another, um, kind of cult hero in a Premier League striker black dude he was over I forgot his name but I remember bumping into Dion Dublin in the Alibi and this is a story that I say for millions of years and this was back in the day and he was super nice so now every time people say Dion Dublin sucks and they hate his commentary I'm first to jump in and defend him because of that one brief interaction I had with him where I was probably off my face on flipping MD anyway and I hardly remember what happened another one is Harry Styles I bumped into Harry Styles as well into um what you're in at the alibi also exchanged like five words max and i just saw him from afar i remember five words max went away had my drink sitting down but i just observed him how he was interacting with people coming up to him asking for a picture just being always cool talking to his friends hanging out chatting up some girls he just seemed lovely and i and till till this day you cannot say a bad word about harry styles around me in my presence just because of that one interaction i had with the guy so for a celebrity it's, it must be weird because Every interaction you have with a fan is just like an interaction you've had with many other fans. It's not that special. But for the fan themselves, it really is. But then if you're a celebrity, if you make a little bit of effort, that fan's going to be your fan forever. But then, you know, making that kind of effort, timing that by 30 interactions, 50 interactions, 100 interactions a day, that's a lot of time. Then you don't get the time to do the cool thing that they like you for. So you either have to kind of go to flipping private members club and hang out there all the time you know walk you know transport yourself in flipping dark sedans everywhere 
um, walk around with security, say no to pictures which will go viral and people will start hating you online. It's a really thankless task to be somebody that's a celebrity or well-known and try and navigate the real world because everyone expects a lot from you. You're trying to do your own thing. They attach a, you know, an outcome. They're like myself. That's probably, that's probably why I messed up because I was outcome I was outcome dependent in that interaction. I was expecting a particular outcome. It didn't happen. Then I lost my rag, which is clearly redacted, clearly immature, clearly loser behavior. But at that time, at that age, um, you know, in that period, I was like, no, they, they would rate this. And I'm one of the first people that bought their stuff. Like, it's like, no, you're not. You're not one of the first people. You're one of hundreds. You're one of thousands, probably. They don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You're definitely not the center of their universe. And probably I was never their target audience anyway. Do you know what I mean, you see the kids that, that line up outside the palace these days. They don't look like me. <laughs> but yeah, but I saw that Kanye picture. I was like, rah, bro. And he's, he's got a better heart than me, for sure. He's got a better heart than me.